Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be reading lists. And these are different types of lists. The first two I have here deal with parts of speech and punctuation marks. And then we will go on to take a look at some other lists. And we're just going to read through the lists together. We're going to start here. This is the words section of the book of lists. Parts of speech. The parts of speech are the classification of words according to how they are used in a sentence. In English, there are eight parts of speech. But, of course, you know that already since you've paid so much attention in English class, right? The first one in this list is adjectives. Descriptive words usually modify nouns. Examples of adjectives are big, sweet, and beautiful. The next part of speech is adverbs. Words that modify verbs or adjectives, often ending in ly. Examples of adverbs would be wildly, brightly, and beautifully. And the next part of speech is conjunctions. Conjunctions are connecting words that link sentences and phrases. Some examples of conjunctions would be and, but, because, and as. The next part of speech is interjections. Either standalone words or words thrown into a sentence without becoming a part of the structure of the sentence. They express surprise, excitement, or some other strong emotion or feeling. Examples would be, hello, yikes, ouch, oh my. The next part of speech is nouns. Nouns are words used to name a person, place, thing, idea, or action. And some examples of nouns would be book, rocket, science, call, as in make a call. Prepositions are also parts of speech. Connecting words that show the relationship or position of one word or thing to another. Examples of prepositions would be of, over, under, beside, and for. The next part of speech is pronouns. Pronouns are words that take the place of nouns. Examples of pronouns would be he, she, it, they, himself. And the faith and final part of speech would be verbs. Verbs are words that express Action. Examples of verbs are run, eat, poke, split, scream. Sounds like an interesting first date. Spelled out in verbs. The next list we're going to look at is punctuation marks. Just as traffic signs govern the rules of the road, punctuation marks help you follow the rules of writing. For example, all drivers stop at a red light and all readers stop at a period. Look, here comes one now. A yellow blinking light means slow down, much like a comma, like that one or this one, which serves as a breather for the reader. Here we have some examples of punctuation marks. We have the apostrophe, which shows possession or missing letters. Brackets encloses a category or a group of thoughts. The colon indicates a list that follows. The comma 
marks separation within the sentence. The dash indicates a break in thought. Ellipsis shows a thought continues or words are missing. Exclamation point shows emphasis and strong feeling. The hyphen joins words. Parentheses provides added information or an aside. A period ends a sentence. A question mark asks a direct question. A quotation marks identify speech or special words. A semicolon links major elements of a sentence. And an underline adds emphasis to words or phrases. On this page, we have a list of the forms of poetry. Usually, poetry is thought of as a written art, but poetry began before writing in prehistoric times. People used a kind of poetic language in songs, prayers, and magic spells. The rhyming patterns helped storytellers and others to remember the words. Lyric poetry usually deals with feelings, emotions, and the senses. Narrative poems are more focused on telling stories. Lyric poetry is a form of poetry. And in lyric poetry, we have haiku, a Japanese form with 17 syllables. Five syllables in the first line, seven in the second, and five in the third. An ode is also lyric poetry, and an ode is a form that marks a serious event, gives high praise, or is about noble feelings. And an elegy is lyric poetry. An elegy is a meditation on life and death. A sonnet is a 14-line love poem, and a limerick is a five-line form of humorous verse. See below. And then another form of poetry is narrative poetry. And we have two types of narrative poetry. We have the epic, which is a lengthy poem that describes an historic and or heroic event. And a ballad. A ballad is a shorter story about a particular person. And the final form of poetry that we have is dramatic poetry. Dramatic poets tell stories through many characters, much like a playwright. If a play's dialogue has many rhymes, the play is considered to be dramatic poetry. English playwright William Shakespeare is the most famous dramatic poet. And down here we have an example of a limerick. There once was a book made of lists. T'was so heavy I bout broke my wrists. But I read it all through till I knew what to do. And I had more good grades in my fists. Very cute. And the next list is forms of prose. Prose, rhymes with nose, is any writing that is not poetry. Newspapers are prose. This book is filled with prose. Most of the books you read are in some form of prose. There are many types of prose, however, and here are some of the ones you might run into. Two forms. The first form of prose is fiction. And we have different definitions. Here's our list of fiction prose. We have the fable. Fables use characters to convey a simple message. And a fairy tale is an adventure in which heroes win over evil. A fantasy is set in an imaginary world with imaginary characters. Historical fiction 
is a story based on history with fictional main characters. Horror, stories about scary things. Mystery, mystery stories often involving crime in which the characters search for something. A myth is a story made up to explain real events or about gods and goddesses of ancient cultures. Romance are romance fiction. These are stories in which the characters look for love. Science fiction would be futuristic stories that use elements of modern science. And finally, the last type of fiction we have here are tall tales. These are humorous stories that are full of exaggeration. And then the second form of prose we have is non-fiction, and these are the types. An autobiography is a story of the author's life. A biography is a story of a person's life written by someone else. An essay is a non-fiction story that discusses one topic. History is an account of a past event or era. Journal is a diary or a record of day-to-day -day events. News stories. These are reports about events of the recent past. And then finally we have reference. A reference is a collection of useful facts and information. The next list we have would be a writer's toolbox. Look at all these good things. They appear to be in alphabetical order. A writer's toolbox. Writers have many ways to express their thoughts. Without knowing it, you probably use some of these popular tool tools in your own writing. Work with your teacher to try out one or two of these that you haven't used before. The first one is alliteration. Repetition of the same sound at the beginning of two or more words. Illusion. Something talked about through hints. Assonance. Words that have the same vowel sound. Characters are the people or creatures in a story. Climax is the high point of a story, usually just before the ending. We have a city named Climax and a city named High Point in the central part of North Carolina. At one point, you can see both of them on the same sign. It's quite titillating. The next one is dialogue. Dialogue is conversation between two or more characters. Hyperbole is an extreme exaggeration used to express an idea or opinion. Imagery. Imagery is words that help form pictures in readers' minds. Irony says one thing, but has a second, usually opposite meaning. And a metaphor is a comparison of different things to show likeness. Mood. The mood is the feeling of a story. It can be sad, happy, gloomy, scary, etc. Onomatopoeia. Automatopoeia is invented words that imitate real sounds. And plot. The plot is the actions or events that drive a story forward. The setting. The setting is the time and location in which the story takes place. And finally, a simile. Simile is a figure of speech that compares two unlike things. We have a little blurb here about onomatopoeia. Without onomatopoeia, comic book characters could not go pow, zap, wham, or sing. See if you can make up a word to describe a real sound. And in my books, I do that frequently. <laughs> we have a list of the biggest newspapers. Now, this is probably um, dated. I'm not sure how old these lists are. While TV and the internet provide a great deal of world news, 
Newspapers remain among the most important and respected sources of information. Here is a list of the top 10 newspapers in the United States, ranked by circulation, as well as a list of top international newspapers. Well, the top five of those are in Japan. And I'm going to probably butcher the names. I apologize in advance. For the list of the biggest newspapers in the United States, we have the top USA Today, which is nationwide, and has a circulation of 2,241,677. Next is the Wall Street Journal from New York, 1,780,605. Then we have the New York Times from New York, with a circulation of 1,100,479. The Los Angeles Times from Los Angeles has a circulation of 972,957. The Washington Post in Washington, D.C. has a circulation of 749,863. And finally, we have the New York Daily News from New York, with a circulation of 707,276. And the world, the biggest newspapers in the world. At first, we have Yamayuri Shimbun, Shimbun in Japan, with a circulation of 14,407,000. They're rounded off. Next is Asahi Shimbun in Japan circulation of 12,393,000. Mainichi Shimbun, Japan, circulation of 5,685,000. Nihon Keizai Shimbun, in Japan, the circulation of 4,703,000. And then Chinichi Shimbun, in Japan, the circulation of 4,635,000. Finally, Bild in Germany with a circulation of 4,390,000. The first newspaper published on a regular basis in America was the Boston Newsletter, which started publication on April 24, 1704. Wow. We have lists of homonyms and contractions. English can be a puzzling language. It's filled with many confusing words, such as homonyms. These are words that sound the same, but have different meanings. A dictionary can help you sort out the meanings of each of these word pairs. Here are some homonyms that you might trip over. And if you hear these in a spelling bee, don't make the mistake my son did two years in a row and not ask to hear them used in a sentence, because you may spell the wrong word. He won the spelling bee one year, but the other two years he got tripped up by homonyms. We have allowed and allowed, bear and bear, blue and blue, break and break, colonel and colonel, deer and dear, God, English is so, wow, fair and fair, feet and feet, flower and flower, here and here, heard and heard, whole and whole, hour and hour, no and no, lone and lone, male and male, Main and main, meat and meat, pear and pear, peace and peace, plain and plain, pray and pray, right and right, roll and roll, sail and sail, soar and soar. Sun and sun, stare and stare, tail and tail, through, through, waste and waste, wait and wait, way and way, 
week and week. There are even some triple homonyms. For example, some examples of these are two, two, and two. There, there, and there. Rain, rain, and rain. Scent, scent, and scent. <laughs> Very confusing. Then we have our list of contractions. A contraction is a word made up of two words combined into one by leaving out one or more letters. An apostrophe appears in place of the missing letters. Here is a list of common contractions and their meanings. Aren't means are not. Can't means cannot. Couldn't means could not. Could've means could have. Didn't means did not. Doesn't means does not. Don't means do not. Hadn't means had not. Hasn't means has not. Haven't means have not. Heed means he would. Heal means he will. He's means he is or he has. I'd means I would. I'll means I will. I'm means I am. Isn't means is not. It'll means it will. It's means it is. I've means I have. Let's means let us. Mightn't means might not. Might've means might have. Mustn't means must not. She'll means she will. She's means she is or she has. Shouldn't means should not. Should've means should have. There'll means there will. Theirs means there is. They'll means they will. There means they are. They've means they have. Twas means it was. Wasn't means was not. Weed means we would. Wheel means we will. We're means we are. Weren't means were not. Weave means we have. What's means what is. Won't means will not. Wouldn't means would not. Would've means would have. You'll means you will. Your means you are. And finally, you've means you have. The contraction ain't means have not, or has not, or is not, or am not. And no matter what you hear on TV, ain't isn't proper to use in speech or writing. Unless, like me, you have a particular character that likes to use it occasionally. Then it's okay. We have abbreviations and palindromes. Abbreviations. Abbreviations make words shorter by leaving out letters. The letters that are left mean the same thing that the longer original word did. Periods are sometimes used to show an abbreviation. Here's our list of abbreviations. AI means artificial intelligence. AKA means also known as. A.M. means morning from the Latin ante-meridian. A.S.A.P. means as soon as possible. A.S.S.T. period stands for assistant. A.V.E. period is avenue. B.L.V.D. period is boulevard. C.O. period is company. CPR 
is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. DEPT period is department. DR period is doctor. DVD is digital video disc. EG means, for example, from the Latin exemplae gratia. ESP is extrasensory perception. ETA is estimated time of arrival. Et al means and others. It is Latin for et, et alia. ETC period is and so forth. The Latin is etc. FYI means for your information. IE means that is from the Latin id est. IQ is intelligence quotient. JR period is junior. LB period is pound from the Latin libra for scale. MD stands for medical doctor. MESSRS period is the plural of Mr. MPH stands for miles per hour. OZ period means ounce from the Italian word onza. PC is politically correct. PM means afternoon from the Latin post meridian. PS stands for postscript at the end of a letter. SR period stands for senior. TPA means to be announced. TBD means to be determined. TLC stands for Tender Loving Care. UFO is an unidentified flying object. VCR is a video cassette recorder. RSVP is an abbreviation you've probably seen. It stands for the French phrase Répondez s'il vous plaît, which means please reply in English. RSVP. And our last list for today, palindromes, up. <laughs> a palindrome is a word or phrase that reads the same forward and backward. The result is often kind of funny. See if you can make up palindromes of your own. There are words that are palindromes, such as mom, dad, noon, tot, bob, pop. Race car, toot, seas, level, and radar. And we have some phrases that are palindromes, such as Madam, I'm Adam, Step on no pets, Bad elf fled lab, No panic, I nap on, Ed is loopy poolside. Ma's story rots, Sam. No lemons, no melon. Rats live on no evil star. No way a papaya won. Elk rap song, no sparkle. Lee has a race car as a heel. Some men interpret nine memos. Wow, these are impressive. Go hang a salami. I'm a lasagna hog. <laughs> and look at this one. A man, a plan, a cat, a bar, a cap, a mall, a ball, a map, a car, a bat, a canal, Panama. <laughs> Golly, that's crazy. And that is our last list for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed these lovely lists. It was fun going over these lists from the word section. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you again really soon.